when I look at domain and range, I'm thinking about X and Y values. So the domain, which is the X, which is all of the X values, is all the input values that I can use that make sense for the situation or function or graph or table or whatever that I'm looking at. The range of a function is all of the output values, so the Y values that make sense for the situation or graph or table or whatever that I'm looking at. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different things that you might see that, and we're going to figure out how we do domain and range for them. So the first one is ordered pairs. So when I look at a list of ordered pairs, as I said in class, I find this terribly confusing to look at. But I can see if I want my domain, which is my X values, I'm going to look at the first value in each of the ordered pairs. So my domain is, and these are fancy brackets, or braces or something. I don't know. I call them fancy brackets because it makes me happy. I'm going to list all of the x values. So I have a negative 3, negative 1, 2, and 4. It's been my experience that they list these values in one of two ways. The first way they list them is the order that you see them. The second way they list them is in like least to greatest order. Now it happens that this is both the same, but when I look at the range that goes with it, so the range is the y values. So I've got my ranges right here. So if I look at the range on that, I have 4, 2, 5, negative 6. These are most certainly not in order. So like I say, usually they show you the domain and range in one of two ways. They either list them from least to greatest, so maybe they would have negative 6, 2, 4, 5, or they list them matched up with their y values. The x, the x and y values matched up. So negative 3, 4 is the first order pair. Negative 1, 2 is the second, 2, 5. It doesn't matter as long as you've got all the numbers. Now, we don't see one here, but if you... It, if you do see, so let's say that we had another ordered pair like um, 2, okay, no, no, 2, 6, okay, we wouldn't list the 2 again because we've already used, we've already said 2 is an acceptable value. It's a reasonable value for my, my situation. I don't need to say it twice, but we're not going to say that, okay? Also, you can tell that this is a function because I have no repeated x values, but that's neither here nor there. Same thing with this. When I look at my domain values, I look in the x column. So my domain is 8, 10, 12, 14. My range is my y values. So my range is 24, 30, 36, 42. Now, these data values are also discrete because if I were to graph these, they would be graphed as a series of points. That's the reason I listed my data as a list because these are unique points and unique values. So every one of these can be plotted and if I plotted it, it would look kind of like that or like that. It would be a bunch of dots. When I see dots on a graph, that tells me I've got discrete data. And for these, same thing. I have basically 824, that's a coordinate, over 8, up 24. Over here I've got negative 1, 2, left 1, up 2. These are points that I could plot that makes them discrete. Okay, so discrete data, your domain and range is always going to be a list like this. Okay, when you graph it on a, on a, on a coordinate plane, it's going to look like dots like that. Okay, now when we look at graphs, it gets a little trickier. Okay, so let's take a look at this first graph. As I told you guys in class, I used my patented smoosh technology. That's spelled S-M-O-O-S-H, patented smoosh technology. And the reason why we smoosh is because it's a lot easier to read these points when they're on the, on the axis than it is to read them kind of when they're out in space, like here. Like, I mean, this is a, I don't know what that says, but if I get it on the x-axis or on the y-axis, it makes it a lot easier for me to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the smallest x value I see, which is right there, and I'm going to smoosh exactly what I see onto the x-axis. And then I'm going to take the biggest one, and I'm going to smoosh it onto the x-axis. And if it's connected all the way through, I smoosh that down too. So what I see there for my domain is that my, my x values are greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so those are my x values. Because again, I went, my, well, my origin is right here. There's my origin. I want negative 2. So it's, and since it's a dot, remember, a dot means greater than or equal to or less than or, well, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. A force field means less than or greater than. Okay? So when I'm looking at an inequality statement, that's what those mean. It means, this one means I get to include the point. This one means I don't because it's in a force field and I can't get to it. 
Okay. Now, when I look at the range, I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to smoosh the range. Now, I only actually see values going along this one point. And that one point, even though I have a dot here and an arrow there, the arrow goes nowhere. It doesn't go up or down. It only goes side to side. So my x value, I'm sorry, my y value is y is equal to negative 1. All right. Now let's take a look at this one. Now for this one over here, I'm going to smoosh again. I'm going to smoosh. So the lowest x value I see is that. The highest value I see is an arrowhead right there, and they are connected solid all the way through. Well, when I've got arrows pointing in both directions, so like this is math for, and you just keep going that way. And the arrowhead is math for, you just keep going that way. Well, they're just saying you just keep going off in both directions. That means it never stops and any value is acceptable. We call that all real numbers. And the math symbol for that is this R with two lines through it. You can write that, you can write ARN, you can write all real numbers, do your thing, whatever, as long as you're giving me a symbol that tells me that all real numbers are valid. Okay, when I smoosh onto my y-axis, the smallest y value I have is an arrow, the biggest y value I have is an arrow, and they're connected all the way through. Same thing here, my range is all real numbers because I have all the points in between and it keeps on going up and it keeps on going down. So that's what all real numbers means and that's what it looks like on your graphs. Okay, let's take a look at this guy right here. Now, these two are examples of continuous data. And when I say continuous data, I don't mean it continues on forever. Okay? I mean that the in between the starting point and whatever ending point I have, I have a connected line. Every point in between is valid. So like on this, from arrowhead to, well, those arrowheads keep on going forever, so that's continuous data. It never stops. Now, when I look here, I have discrete data because these are the only values that I'm allowed to use. I can't use the points in between. So when I smoosh this down, I'm going to smoosh a dot, 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 dot. There's already a dot there. Another dot. Oh, wait, no, I, I just went dot crazy. There's no dot there. Okay, let's just swiggle that out. That, that, dot, that dot doesn't exist. I'm sorry, I got Got away from myself there, okay? So now, just like on the previous examples, just like these examples, since it's discrete data, its dots are discrete, I'm just going to list the values that I see there. So my domain values are 1, 2, 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And then we, we don't keep going like I did. Now for my range, I do the same thing. I smoosh my smallest value. Then I got a dot already. I got a dot, dot, dot. Dot, and then I stop because I'm done. Okay, my smallest y value is negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's my domain and range. It's just a list because all I have are dots. Do the same, now we'll do the same thing here. Okay, so I'm going to smoosh my dots down. Now notice, this one smooshed and that one, they both smoosh to the same place. So I'm not going to list that 2 twice. I've already said that 2 is a valid point for my input. I'm only going to list it once. So I smoosh all of my points. And here it happened again right there. Okay. So when I write my domain, I have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 1 because there was no point on 0. Now, when I look at my range, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to smoosh. And I got overlap here, one there, point there, point there, point there. So now I'm looking at my x, my y values. I have negative 2, negative 1, uh, 2, 3, 4. Now, this is not a function because right here I fail vertical line test and right here I fail vertical line test. So this is, I can write a domain and range even if it's not a function, but you have to recognize, notice, even though negative 3 had two points on it, I only listed it once. Even though 1 had two points on it, I only listed it once. Likewise, over here on the, on the range, even though negative 2 only had, was listed twice, I only listed it once. Okay? We don't duplicate when we write down domain and range. We don't duplicate values. Okay? Let's take a look at this guy. We had a lot of trouble with this one on our homework. Okay? So when I look at my range, I sorry, my domain, I have an arrowhead here. I have an arrowhead here. Okay? So that means my domain is all real numbers. When I look at my range, I have an arrowhead up here, but down here I don't have an arrowhead. If you don't see a bubble, so if you don't see a force field or an arrow, you have to assume that you can include that value. So I'm going to smoosh a dot. 
So this tells me that my y values are greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay. And then we had some confusion on this one too. When we looked at, a, a lot of people said, well, the dot started here and it ended there, so my y values go between here. So let's, let's smoosh. Okay, I got a dot here. I'm smooshing here. Everything in between. Okay, so my domain is continuous because all between those two points, the line is connected. So this is going to be a between statement. My x is between uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I can include the endpoints because those are dots. Now, when I look at my range, I'm not looking at where the dots are. I'm looking at the lowest point and the highest point. And if, again, if I don't see a circle, if I don't see a bubble, or an arrow, I assume that I can include it. So I can include those points, and all of these are connected all in between, so I, every point in between is, is included as well. So my range, my y's, go between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, and positive 4. Okay? So that's how we do graphs. All right, now let's look at these. Now these graphs also kind of threw you all for a little bit of a loop. But again, I'm not even going to look at this one. This one was kind of a hot mess. But let's look at this one, okay? The lowest x value I have is 0. The biggest x value I have is 32. A lot of you assumed that there were arrowheads on the other at each end. But remember, when you don't see, if you don't see a dot, I mean a circle or an arrow, you assume that it's a bubble. I mean, I'm sorry, that it's a dot, okay? So I can include those points. So my domain is all x values between 0 and 32. My range is all y values between 60 and, let's just say, 120. Now, when you think about this, that kind of makes sense because if your heart beat, so your heart rate dips below 60, like if your heart rate was zero, that means that you're no longer with us. It, it's okay for your, well, it's not good, but I mean, your heartbeat can be below zero for a little while, but not too much, okay? When I look at these situations, Okay, I have to take, um, I have to write an equation. Now, we talked about this yesterday. If you can't write an equation, you've got to build a table. But my equation is y equals 70x. Okay, and x is my number of hours, and y is my um, miles traveled. Okay, so what this is saying is, what, what are reasonable values? Okay, so if I put y equals 70x into my calculator, Okay, um, let's see. Oh, I don't have that 70x in my calculator, and I look. Zero, zero is actually, I'm pretty okay with that value being, being valuable because that says I'm sitting in my driveway and I haven't driven anywhere yet. Um, if I go one mile, I mean, sorry, if I drive for, oh, I got this backwards. One hour, this is x, this is y. One hour, I'm going to go 70 miles. If I drive for two hours, I'm going to go 140 miles. If I keep on going through that pattern, remember, it says my trip is 980 miles, and if I scroll, after 14 hours, I'll go 980 miles. So my domain would look like, now, let's think about this. Is my domain, is this discrete or continuous? Well, it's continuous because I can stop any time. I don't have to drive for nine, I don't have to drive, drive the full 14 hours in one stretch. I could stop. I could drive part of a mile. I could drive part of an hour. So my x values are going to be between 0 and 14. When I look at the range of my y values, my y values are going to be between 0 and 980 because that's the total number of miles that I would have driven. Okay? This has to make sense. You have to think about this. Okay? So we look at this last problem here. This one was tricky, guys. This one was really tricky. When we finally got done, we wrote in our equation as y equals 0.5x, okay? So when I look at my x and y values, if I grade zero tests, it takes me zero time, zero quizzes. Zero quizzes, zero time. If I grade for one minute, if I grade for one minute, it, I can grade a half a quiz, but I can't grade half a quiz. So I got to grade two minutes to get one quiz done. I grade four minutes to get two quizzes done, all the way down until I've done 300 minutes to get 150 quizzes done. 
my domain is 0 to 1, I'm sorry, to 300 because that's minutes. My range is 0, 100, 0 to 150, and that's number of quizzes.